So chemotherapy really is targeted age uh, therapy. You know, we think of it as, you know, more broad based, a little bit more like a sledgehammer than targeted, but truly um, they're, they're targeted. They, they go after very specific enzymes that have to do with um, cell replication, uh, mitosis, as well as metastasis. So um, these really are targeted and the mechanisms of action, I think increasingly will be matched up with the biology of the various subtypes of breast cancer. And particularly, I will say, some of the, the DNA repair deficits or capability of, is gonna help us sort out, I think, over time as we get more good diagnostics to help us understand in this cancer right now, is it homologous recombination deficient or isn't it at this moment, you know, for example. So the mechanisms are very uh, different. The, the taxanes certainly are anti-mitotic as well as cytoplasmic microtubules. They also have anti-metastatic uh, effects, uh, clearly. And, um, and they, they inhibit a microtubule depolymerization, uh, of course, but it's really microtubule targeted, both the mitotic spindle and cytoplasmic um, uh, uh, microtubules. The, um, the anti-metabolites, you know, such as capecitabine, methotrexate, for example, are really about S phase. Those are proliferating, not as helpful for your mesenchymal uh, breast cancers that are more invasive and metastatic, you know, at that time and more resistant, uh, if you will. The, um, the apothelones are also similar in that they are deep, they prevent depolymerization, but they bind differently to the microtubule um, than, than do the taxanes and they can be effective even when cells are resistant to the taxanes because of certain tubulin mutations or upregulation of PGP that extrudes the taxanes from the cell. The, um, the apothelones, ixabebolone, can be useful, but again, the mechanism is the same as, as the taxanes. It's just it overcomes some of the resistance mechanisms to the taxanes. And then lastly, the agents that, that prevent polymerization, uh, such as aribulin, and the uh, other vinca alkaloids such as vinarelbine. Vinarelbine hasn't been as extensively studied late line. We actually don't have data on the extent of its non-cross resistance in patients who have had an anthocycline taxane and capecitabine, for example. But in, in this setting, we do have aribulin, which coming in after cells have become refractory to a taxane and, and refractory to capecitabine, um, the aribulin uh, in stopping the polymerization of the microtubules is highly anti-mitotic, highly anti-proliferative, as well as, interestingly, highly anti-invasive. We can see this when we look at these CT scans. We'll have this diffuse liver infiltration, and the uh, liver enzymes will be really markedly elevated, and that's very, very serious because you really can't safely give a lot of chemotherapy. If patients' liver function tests are very abnormal, they will not clear it. But um, aribulin within a cycle or two, you can get very dramatic reduction in the liver function tests and improvement on the CT scans very, very quickly because of the anti-mesenchymal properties. It just kind of like stops it from infiltrating and, and, and proliferating. And so it's very highly non-cross resistant. Interestingly, um, the, the mechanisms of resistance to taxanes probably, I think, set the cells up for benefit to go after those microtubules in a different way than the taxanes. I think mechanism of action of chemotherapy is really interesting and I do think it is important, uh, especially if you're trying to avoid uh, drug resistance. And so it's typical in my practice to try to switch from one mechanism to a completely different mechanism when that opportunity arises, hoping to avoid overlapping cross-resistant resistance uh, uh, pathways. So I think it is important and we need to be mindful of this and it's common practice in the clinic uh, to think about class of chemotherapeutic, mechanism of chemotherapeutic and switch from one to a, a maybe a completely different class when possible. It's not always possible but uh, uh, I'm often mindful of that and it does weigh in on my treatment decisions and I think about it a lot. Today I think it's probably fair to say that most of us utilize the the NCCN guidelines um, and the big phase three clinical trials that are out there in terms of choosing and recommending a sequence of chemotherapy, whether it be single agents or combinations. I don't think we're um, really factoring in mechanism of action or subtype of breast cancer now as much as we will be in the future. 
we're, we're limited. We really want to have um, level one evidence um, to really, sh you know, we're going to obviously favor agents that will improve survival. You know, for example, we will favor earlier on in um, metastatic breast cancer agents that have less toxicity so that you can then prolong the duration of the treatment because then the patient will ha stay in disease control for a longer period of, of time. So we're, we're favoring uh, agents mainly based on what we know works when somebody's already had an anthracycline. The taxanes work well, for example. What works after somebody's had anthracyclines and taxanes? Well, capecitabine works, exabebolone works, eribulin works, et cetera. Where's our biggest body of evidence? That's really what we're mainly uh, utilizing these days. However, you know, we, like the, some of the, um, the um, alkylating agents as such as cisplatin, you know, for example, or even utilizing some doxorubicin in the metastatic setting, these agents tend to be effective for breast cancers, particularly triple negative breast cancers. We don't know so well about some of the highly genomically unstable luminal B ER positive breast cancers that hasn't been studied well there, but um, in e ER negative disease, um, hurt, uh, particularly triple negative disease, there's a group of these that are very, very, very highly proliferative with KI67s of you know, 80, 90 percent that are, that, that are really in um, sites of disease that would render them quite sensitive to platinum-based agents, uh, such as um, mediastinal lymph nodes, thoracic lymph nodes, parenchymal lung, uh, et cetera. And um, we don't have that same high level of evidence that uh, platinum-based agents are superior to other choices, such as a taxane there in that setting. And so we're not thinking as much about the mechanism there. I, I think that should evolve over time. Uh, we just need better diagnostic tools to help us understand, well, what kind of breast cancer? What is the subtype right now? What are the DNA repair deficits that we can exploit right now? I really think that's where we're going.